Zombies, Smoking Hot Babes, Parkour, Fisting, Vikings, Rahim? Yes, Haran has it all, but what it doesn't have yet is the answer to my question. Can you beat Dying Light with only your fists? Let's find out together. So you all know how this adventure begins. Crane goes skydiving because the GRE wanted him to beat Dying Light with only his fists, but if I learned anything from Far Cry 3, it's that skydiving never ends well. So I get stuck, I land on my balls, I piss my pants for the first time in 20 years, and then my hero becomes a human candy bar. So of course there's the whole introduction and parkour tutorial, but I'm already a parkour prodigy, so skip all that and now I had to kill my first zombie. This was a poor representation of the hell I would be enduring in the challenge since it died in only a single punch. But don't worry, because the first mission is jam packed with zombies. Spike sent me here to jiggle some batteries because he heard that I, Mr. Fister, was on a fist only quest, so he wanted to know what these hands were truly capable of. I could jiggle a lot more than batteries with these hands, but unfortunately, Jade wasn't anywhere near me, so I couldn't demonstrate. It didn't take long before I realized how ineffectively effective my fists were. Fists in the wrong hands are a terrible weapon. They have the lowest damage of anything in the game, but they also have infinite durability. So to an optimist, my fists were a double-edged hand. It's much faster to just lure the zombies away from the cars, so I did that, and now I successfully jiggled both batteries. But not even 5 minutes later, I met a construction worker zombie who wanted to deconstruct my body. I threw punch after punch at this brute, but he was simply built different. I was blinded by bloodlust, but thankfully he pulverized my pancreas with his hammer, which brought me back to my senses and helped me to see that I didn't even have to fight this dude in order to interact with the electricity thing and fix the light problem. In fact, I would never have to fight another goon again. It may seem like you have to fight them since they're fairly common in the game, but every time I found one, they were just guarding whatever it was that I needed to interact with, so I could lure them away, complete the objective, and they couldn't do a thing about it since they suck at their jobs. I returned to Spike, he said that they would sing songs about my hands for generations to come, and with that we beat the mission. My next mission was to retrieve some anti-zombie medication from some airdrops, so I killed the zombies in the area, but the last chap decided to mind his own business, so I opened the crates, and they were filled to the brim with antizin. My disappointment was immeasurable, so I called Jade to let her know that I failed. I couldn't find Zombrex anywhere. She tried explaining to me that we needed it, but it made no sense to me. How can we need this stuff if drugs are bad? So I burned it all because it's irresponsible to leave drugs laying around, and that's when I realized that I was right, because the peaceful chap dropped dead when he inhaled the drug fumes. I was safe because I was wearing my viking armor, but this just reinforced to me that drugs are bad. I heard some scary noises, and turns out that antizen addicts could smell wasted product. It didn't matter whether I lived or died here, because after this night, I wouldn't really have to deal with volatiles ever again, because surprisingly, you don't have to kill a single one to beat the game. Of course there's bolters, but those are different, so we'll get to those later. After that, I questioned Rice about his Zombrex, and he said that there was two ways I could obtain it. He knew Mr. Fister wasn't just a cool nickname. It was a name with reputation, a name that had meaning behind it. It meant that I had the ability to do various hand-related tasks, like knocking on doors, opening fridges, and climbing radio towers. So he gave me a choice. Either I could replace his previous nipple jiggler, since his last one just lost his hand in a work-related accident, or I could activate the radio tower so Rice could get in contact with his mommy, Rice Seed. Obviously, I chose to activate the tower, which meant that I would have to deal with not dealing with a goon, which would result in getting my bones crushed, and then we get introduced to toads. Toads are the weakest of the weak, so it took no effort to beat them to death with my skin mittens. I activated the tower, Rice refuses to give me the Zombrex that we so desperately need, so I called Jade, the lying druggie, to give her the news, but she said that Antizen was Zombrex. There it is. 
Uh, whoops. That explains why the fumes killed the zombie. So, drugs are bad, but sometimes good? But enough about that, because she asked me if I could educate the students at Haran Public School. I came here to be a substitute teacher since they were short-staffed due to the zombie apocalypse, but it's only natural for children to disrespect the substitute. I tried knocking some sense into them, but after a locker inspection, I found a pack of cigarettes. I didn't feel any hate towards these delinquent scumbags, only pity, because I realized there was no getting through to a bunch of rebels. Maybe I couldn't teach them the simple act of how to open a door to save a friend who's getting beaten to death, but I could teach them two other things. How to empathize with a pack of cigarettes and my strategy for the fist only challenge. I haven't even told you guys about my top secret strategy yet, but if you beat any enemy into a place where they can't use the full range of motion of their limbs, like into an area that's cluttered with furniture, or jamming them into a tight space, like under a car, then they die instantly. That was the first part of my two-part plan, because I also noticed in the previous mission that humans don't get staggered by my normal punches, and my fists barely do any damage to them. Stagger resistance would make it impossible to kill them via tight space, and normal punches just make it extremely hard to kill them in the first place. I couldn't allow anyone to resist the fist, so before I came to the school, I spent an hour upgrading my combat skill tree to level 6, so I could acquire the superman punch and hopefully be able to stagger human enemies. But as you can see from the footage, it obviously worked, so I pretty much just repeated the process for every student I came across in the school, and then I met up with Jade. She said that I was such a competent and good-hearted teacher that she would reward me with a crowbar, leaving a like and a comment on the video, and subscribing to the channel. And hey, while she's at it, you guys should consider doing so too. Next, I had to kill a bolter to retrieve a tissue sample, but these guys are tough. I'm still not even completely sure what happened, but when it climbed up on the roof, it just dropped dead. Maybe it has an irrational fear of heights, which caused it to die from a heart attack, but I didn't waste the opportunity. I did a few more tasks, took out some more enemies, and then we come to the hardest section in the challenge, Rice's Garrison. You see, you guys already know how easy it is to beat down people with melee weapons. You just walk up to them, hit them with a super punch, and it's game over for them. But gun guys? They're simply built different. They're a lot more resilient to getting staggered, although the power punch does have a small chance to knock them down, but it's more consistent to just Mario jump on their heads and try to shove them under a car. But the best way to take them out was to use the environment. I don't know what you guys think about spike kills, but I don't consider it a fail if I hit an enemy into spikes, and let me tell you why. How is it my fault that the people of Haran like to decorate their streets, homes, and vehicles with deadly spikes? Maybe I just don't understand third world decor, but I didn't want to blame the failure of the challenge on a cultural difference. That would be close minded and very insensitive of me, so I decided to let these kills slide. So anyway, I could push them into the van spikes, use the explosive barrels to make them kill themselves, or if I got really lucky, they would be standing beside a pile of fire. I guess he started it since there was a nip in the air. So I beat him into the flames, which was a win-win, because now he was warm, and since he was charcoal now, he couldn't kill me. Of course, I didn't always need to use environmental hazards. If I was able to isolate one of them, I could just beat them until they died from suffering through all that blunt trauma. I did the same thing to the last four enemies, and then I get captured and thrown into the arena, and now I had to fight the demolisher. I'm not too sure if you can actually kill him with your fists or not, but if you can, you have to punch him about 10 billion times. Not to mention, if you die, he regains about 15% of his health. So right now, I failed the challenge. But in Dying Light, you can replay missions, so if you want to see how I avoid this fail and beat the demolisher later on with only my fists, then stick around until the end of the challenge. And with that, I escape the arena, make my way through the sewers, I killed a few more humans with guns, and now we were in Sector Zero. At this point in the game, I think it's pretty obvious how I handled fighting both zombies and humans, but I knew Tahir was coming up, and if I couldn't kill a demolisher with my fists in their current state, then 
How was I gonna kill a fully grown to here? I needed to get stronger, and that's when it hit me. I don't know why I didn't think of this when I first started the challenge, but I totally forgot that you can upgrade your fist damage in the legend level upgrade menu. This realization was a game changer. Normal zombies? Too easy. Gun guys? More like dead guys. To here? Hey, send me a postcard when you make it to hell. But of course to obtain legend level upgrades, I would have to fully upgrade any one of my skill trees. So I did a method that any fool can do. I went to the quarantine zone known as the stuffed turtle, and if you go in the store, you can find three disaster relief packages right from the get go. Then if you leave the store and go back in, they respawn, and turning these packages into the quartermaster gets you a buttload of XP, especially if you switch to nightmare difficulty. So I did this for an hour, and boom, I maxed out my survivor rank and acquired the unarmed damage upgrade. Of course, I didn't want to be overpowered, because that would be boring as hell, so I only upgraded my fists once. Now that my fists weren't butt freaking useless, I was able to kill everything 15 times faster. Most missions from here were very straightforward. I could pretty much haul ass past everything, or lure the zombies away and complete any mission without breaking a sweat. Except for the mission where I had to fight to here and a bunch of Rice's thugs. Killing Rice's thugs on ground level was easy. I could just sneak up on them, fist their faces off their bodies, and repeat the process. They were also throwing bombs at me, so while I waited for the explosion to go off, I would just beat one of them so they couldn't move, and then we would blow up together. But since I can respawn and they can't, I couldn't lose. Although things got a little harder when they spawned on the balcony above me. They always saw me when I was climbing up, so the biggest factor was getting lucky with where they were positioning themselves. If they were bundled up, it wasn't even possible to land a single hit, but once they spread out, I killed the first one, and then I just had to wait for the rest of them to come to me. Thankfully, they made it easy for me, so I finished them off, I got past the other gun dudes by dying and respawning past them all, and now I had to fight to here. His last mistake was bringing a machete to a fist fight, so luckily I could bully him with back to back power punches. There really isn't much to this fight, just power attack him and you win. Also his goons show up, but they're super easy to take out. So I finished him off and now Rice challenges me to an honorable duel. He made the same mistake as Tahir, so I beat him, throw him off the cliff, and blah 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 roll the credits. But wait, what about the demolisher fight? Well, after I beat the game, I went back and played the arena mission again, and now that my fists were upgraded, I still couldn't damage it. Screw it, so I upgraded my fists even more, and boom, I was able to damage and kill him with only my fists. So can you beat Dying Light with only your fists? Hell yes you can, just as long as you upgrade them in the legend level upgrade menu. Well, consider leaving a like, a comment, and subscribing, and I'll see you all in the next one.